This is a tire. Now you may ask, what is this tire for? Well, I'm here to tell you guys some very exciting news and a huge project for the channel that is going to be so incredibly awesome. I am building a go-kart from scratch. You know, I'm getting all the metal. I have gotten a lot of the parts and I've always wanted to build a go-kart and now being an engineer in college, I want, I'm a very hands-on type of person and doing book work and all these textbook problems gets really boring and not very motivating to become an engineer. So I took on this project in hopes to, you know, get more motivated and excited about becoming an engineer. So this go-kart build is going to be a lot of fun and I'm really excited to share this entire build process with you guys. So I'm going to take this video to kind of introduce you guys to what we have so far um, in terms of parts and design. Now my friend Will, who came down from college uh, this weekend to help me start building this go-kart. And right now we are actually working on the computer on the frame design. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that as well as some of the parts we just got so far to start building the go-kart. Now, excuse the weird lighting, I got a new light and I'm going to be testing out some different angles to kind of give you guys some better lighting for these videos and I just realized in that last shot that there was a shadow on half of my face so I changed the angle up so that's going to be kind of a trial and error process in these coming videos. But yeah, my entire, my overall plan for this is to show you guys each step of the build process. Now as I just said, Will and I are currently designing the frame on a program called AutoCAD and SolidWorks and AutoCAD is a uh, two-dimensional design program and SolidWorks is a three-dimensional design program and it's a lot more sophisticated and shows you all the different pieces and components that you will have on the go-kart and um, tomorrow we're actually me uh, well I have a lot of the metal right now but tomorrow we're going to be renting a miter saw and we're going to be cutting all the pieces that we need for the frame, or most of them at least. And that's what we're trying to do right now is get this frame design finalized so we can just know right away how many pieces of each length we need to build this frame. And then as soon as all those pieces are cut, I'm going to send it off to the welding shop to get welded because I don't have really any skills welding yet and that's something I've wanted to attain in the future. And But for something like a go-kart where the welds need to be really strong because you know we're gonna be going fast I don't want the welds to break due to my inexperience of welding so I'm gonna take the go-kart to a professional welder and have it done for now and then go learn weldings you know in the future and practice and stuff like that and then you know if I just decide to modify this in any way then I can all do it all myself um, but yeah that's where we're gonna start for this go-kart and um, I'll go ahead and show you guys the parts now, to start off the materials of what we have so far, I thought I'd start by showing you guys the core for this entire go-kart. And this is the metal tubing that we're going to be designing the frame out of. And this tubing is 1x1 one by, one by 0 0.065 inch gauge uh, steel tubing. And the reason why I picked this tubing is because you know, it's not too big, it's not too small, um, the cross-section area is plenty strong enough to support the weight of a go-kart and the forces that we're going to be exerting while driving this thing around turns and stuff like that. And so I just got six sections of six foot um, steel tubing like this from a, a store called Marshall's uh, Industrial Freight or Industrial Hardware. And um, I think we're actually going to pick up a few more tomorrow because we didn't account for all the extra metal of some of the uh, additional components that we hadn't um, catted out on the computer yet. So this is the metal and then I'm going to go into the uh, tires next. So as I showed you guys in the beginning of the video, here are the tires to the go-kart. And um, these are racing slick tires off of a shifter cart. And um, they're, you know, there's no tread so it's going to provide some excellent grip around turns and stuff. And uh, these tires are normally pretty expensive because they're official um, racing go-kart tires. They normally go for around 40 50 bucks a piece, um, but for the sake of the build process, I went ahead and found some used ones, luckily, on a website called CometCartSales.com, and I got the entire set of four for 40 bucks, and so that, I was pretty happy at finding that. And uh, these rear tires are fat. They're seven inches wide, 
you know, they're going to provide some excellent grip and it's just going to look really mean with that wide stance in the back. And uh, here are the front tires and they're at five or five and a half inches wide, I can't remember off the top of my head. You know, and that's just the standard size for most shifter carts and uh, that's what I kind of want to go for with this go-kart design is more of a street cart and a lot of go-karts you may see um, <coughs> designed on YouTube or built on YouTube have kind of off-road tires with tread and stuff, but I wanted to focus more on being a street cart, you know, excellent grip, excellent handling, you know, good amount of power. Not really going to be taking this off-road, so I felt that these um, street slicks would be appropriate. Now the next part we got up is the go-kart seat. Now this is a seat that I ordered from Bintelli Karts, and it's a standard padded fiberglass seat that you'll see on most um, racing shifter carts. And this is about 100 bucks, or actually it was 75 and 25 shipping because it had to be in such a huge box. Um, but I was lucky enough to be able to find this because I wanted a shifter cart style seat like this that sits low and, and low to the ground. Um, but most of them are really expensive, like upwards of two, three hundred dollars. But luckily I was able to find this one for pretty cheap. Um, and this it doesn't have any holes in it right now, so you have to go ahead and drill your own holes once you get your um, seat mounts and that will come later once we have the frame designed and finalized and all welded together. Alright, so here we got the universal joints. Now these were probably the most difficult part to find for the go-kart build. This was going to be a make it or break it part on whether or not this go-kart is going to have an independent suspension with shocks and suspension arms versus just a dead suspension like you'd find on most shifter carts. And having a suspension that, you know, pivots and has shocks and stuff was something I really wanted to do because it adds, you know, a whole new handling factor. And I think it just makes the cart look more, you know, upper level and designed with more of a engineering standpoint. And these um, U-joints are huge. They're a lot bigger than what I thought they'd be. I got them in the mail today thinking they'd be maybe four inches long, but they're seven inches long. And they weigh probably about three pounds each. So... Um, we, Will and I had to do a lot of redesigning and re-engineering to figure out how to fit these parts into the go-kart because, as I said, that's something we really wanted to maintain was that, um, you know, independent rear suspension and front suspension as well. Now the next parts I'm going to show you guys are the wheels themselves. And um, these are just your standard racing shifter cart wheels. Um, they're made out of aluminum and they have a polished finish. Uh, they're, the bolt pattern is 3 by 2.5 inches, and I got them from the same side as I got the tires. Um, these are the rear um, wheels. As you can see, they're pretty wide to fit those wide tires, and then here are the front ones. I tried to find a set of used ones, but it's really hard, um, and I wanted to make sure that these wheels fit with the tires I got, so I went ahead and ordered them from the same site that I got the tires from just to make sure they fit. And um, these things are, were one of the most expensive pieces to buy for the go-kart. Um, they run about $40 each, and if you think you have to buy four of them, it's quite a bit of money. But um, these are going to be really cool. As you can see, the offset for the rear wheels is really deep. So it's going to add a really cool design. It's going to make the cart have that racing look to it, which is essentially what I'm going for. So next up, we got the rear hubs, the front hubs, and the front spindles. Um, these spindles are just a standard spindle with a C bracket that you can weld on to any steel piece and um, that's why I got these because they're you know just really easy to weld on. Um, the, the hubs in the back are a 1.25 inch bore for the 1.25 inch axle that I'm going to be using and then the front hubs have a 5 8 inch di uh, diameter um, bore bearing and that that's what fits over the spindle arm and um, these I just got from uh, CometCartSales.com also, and um, they're made out of nice billet aluminum, so they're going to be strong and also have a nice finish um, and look to the overall go-kart build. Alright, so here we got the heart of the entire go-kart, and this is the engine that I decided to pick out for this go-kart build. And I'm not going to hold this up the entire time because it's really heavy. Now this engine is a 212cc um, engine from Harbor Freight and it's from their Predator engines. Now you guys may say if you know go-karts or if you know um, small engines like that, um, you may say, well why did you go with the Predator Freight one versus you know, a Honda because Honda's a lot better. 
Well, here's the reason. Honda is equal to $400 or $500. Predator Freight with a two-year warranty where anything breaks, I can take it back for free, $130. So that's the reason why. And I felt that the, you know, the money was great for the value. And essentially, it's just a Honda clone. It's the same engine, same components. And this motor has a ton of replacement parts. You can buy an entire motor rebuild kit. I can buy a forge piston, I could buy forge connecting rods, you name it, they build it for this motor and you can bump the horsepower up crazy to crazy numbers. I think right now it's running around six and a half horsepower. Just with a simple intake, exhaust and uh, injector, you can get it up to around 10 and that's going to be plenty fast for this go-kart. There's another guy on YouTube um, that has a go-kart like this and he did a speed test where he actually got up close to 50 miles an hour and that's absolutely crazy and that also depends on your gear ratio so that's something I have to figure out but yeah this motor is a great motor and I highly recommend it if you guys are looking at building a go-kart of your own alright so now that I introduce you guys to all of the parts that we have so far for this go-kart I kinda wanted to show you how I started building this and um, as you can see here on my garage floor I have a tape design laid out. I'll just move the seat out of the way to show you guys a little bit better. Um, but I have this tape design laid out and the reason why I did this was because I wanted to get a good idea how big I should make it um, based on my size and the proper seating position I wanted and so I felt that this was the best option. Some people go ahead and use chalk but I wanted to go um, wanted to use tape just so it was a little more permanent and it was easier to reference when I took measurements to then put into the computer. And uh, as you guys can see, in the front we have the two front uh, front tires, obviously, and um, the suspension arms. And then as you go farther back, you can see the main part of the go-kart frame and the seat is going to go right here. Approximately. And th that is, you know, subject to change based on um, my seating position and um, you know where I want the pedals to be and stuff like that and um, in the back you can see we kind of roughly have um, where the engines gonna be mounted right now and I just have it sitting up on a box to kind of give us an idea of um, the frame that we're gonna be designing to support the motor uh, because we have to build the motor up on top of a frame so that it can clear the axle and also have room for the sprocket and brake disc and this will make a lot more sense um, when you guys actually see it when the build process starts. So um, I just kind of want to show you guys the initial frame design on the ground. And then we're going to go in and I'm going to show you what we're doing on the computer. One thing that I forgot to mention that I wanted to say to you guys before I went ahead and introduce you to the um, computer designs was that this um, design on the ground is just a perimeter of the frame and just to kind of get a general idea of the sizing like I said before um, this doesn't really show any support frames in the middle obviously there have to be some more um, pieces to support the weight of me and the engine and just to give the go-kart a more structurally sound frame and you guys will see that in the um, computer design I'm about to show you alright everybody so this is Will my good friend from college and he came down for the weekend to help me build this go-kart or at least start building it and um, right now we are working on our computers uh, I had done the rough 2d model uh, initially and then I sent that over to him so he could start on the 3d model in SolidWorks and now what this is allowing us to do is to analyze the frame and just get a list of all the different pieces we're gonna need to cut so we can have an idea um, and be more efficient uh, when renting this miter saw because it's like 42 bucks to rent one for one day and um, it's really cool seeing this come together in 3d it really you know puts it in perspective and brings it you know out and you know lets you visualize it a lot more and that helps a lot when um, thinking about the design process so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the um, the model on the computer Alright guys, so what we have right here is AutoCAD, and that's a 2D CADing software. Um, you can also use it for 3D, but it's mostly used for two-dimensional stuff. Um, and this is what I initially designed the frame as. And as you can see, it looks very similar to what I had taped out on the ground over there when I showed you before. Um, but now it has a lot more supports in the middle, and uh, that's what I was talking about. 
and you can see that the suspension arms are added on the side with the um, roughly measured tire sizes to kind of give us an idea. Now, once I finish this, I sent this over to Will, and he imported this design onto um, SolidWorks so we could get a 3D model. So now, um, Will, why don't you go ahead and explain kind of what you did and um, how you got this 3D model put together. So how SolidWorks works is a, um, basically what you're looking at right now is a full assembly of parts we created from this specific drawing. So right here, I used a drawing to get a bunch of dimensions um, and was able to, to figure out how to, oh my god, come here, sorry. So anyways, you know, you can see the 3D model up in the corner here. This is just a two-dimensional model of it right now as we're updating it. Uh, and then if we go back, this is just, these are parts that I've made, you know, separate cuts all around. You can see all these, these are all separate cuts, separate pieces based upon, if we look over at this menu here, so this is, you know, all the different reference geometries we made so that we can know, so that in the 3D space it knows where to put the, the parts. And then these are all the separate cuts and parts we did for for this. Um, normally, um, I do this a little more efficiently because this is very symmetric and I can uh, do the symmetry, but since I want to be able to, we want to be able to manipulate each part individually, all of these parts have been made and then um, connected individually so that they, they can all be manipulated individually when it comes time. Uh, the beauty is eventually we'll be able to do some evaluation stuff, some uh, be able to find out the mass properties, um, probably some other really cool uh, interference detections and flow analysis, all kinds of stuff in three dimensions so that way we can do all these tests without actually having to run our go-kart through a wind tunnel or anything and cost money. So you finished the, in the kind of the overall frame and you just finish the rear suspension arms as you guys can see and why don't you explain to them what you're working on right now in terms of the uh, rear engine so what's going on right now is Andrew and I figured out we kinda had to problem solve and figure out um, where from this part we were gonna connect our rear shock um, and we figured out that instead of connecting it to um, making an A-arm here we could actually just keep this flat like it is and now we're using, and then we're going to utilize these. These pillars are going to become uh, the uh, motor support. So we can, we're going to raise the motor up six inches uh, off of the main frame, and that way, it, firstly, the shock has a place to attach to, and we have enough clearance for the motor to be able to connect to the uh, the dead axle, right. and. Um, you're gonna have enough clearance. So basically, this is gonna become the six inch tall motor mount, uh, or motor uh, support plate. Right, and so what our plan is, is as you guys can see, there's that center section there, and that's gonna have the dead axle, meaning that there's no um, undulation of the suspension, <coughs> and that's gonna be a steady point of the axle where we can mount the sprocket and the brake disc and then on each side of that frame there's going to be a bearing and then that's where the U-joint connects and that's where we have our suspension mounts and uh, it's going to be really cool I'm really excited because I've never really seen a street go-kart with a sophisticated suspension like this and it really helps to work on these computer programs because it just puts things in perspective and gives you an idea of what you need and you know error analysis before you even start cutting so you can actually um, you know be more efficient in your building process alright guys so that's gonna do it for this introduction of this new crazy project that I wanted to introduce you guys and uh, bring to the channel um, basically I just want to show you guys the parts that I have so far and the initial frame design both on the ground and on the computer and it's gonna be a lot of fun I've been really excited for this entire project and I've been waiting to announce it because I feel like it's going to bring uh, a whole bunch of new people to the channel and uh, kind of create a whole new community with the channel because um, there's a lot of people out there that search for you know homemade go-kart designs and uh, I want to be able to help people if they're looking uh, to build one or if they need some advice and so that's kind of like my overall goal with this project is to not only build a really cool 
and fun go-kart and for my benefit but also for your guys benefit as well um, to kind of give you some ideas and also um, any help if you guys are looking for it so make sure you guys stay tuned because there are going to be plenty of videos to come in terms of this uh, go-kart build and as I said tomorrow we're gonna be starting on the cutting and we're gonna go ahead and record that I'm not too sure when that video is gonna be released maybe sometime uh, next week but it's gonna be a lot of fun and I'm really excited to share it with you guys so thanks for watching everyone make sure you comment subscribe like the video and uh, I will see you guys in the next one take it easy guys